Hi, my name is Ravi. Today I am working on Suzuki Swift Beetle 2008 ZC71S 1.3 liter car. Customer complaint check engine light illuminate and other shop has scanned the car and found O2 sensor related code. Customer has been told that this car need a new O2 sensor. But he need a proper diagnosis on this car. So let's diagnose it. Okay, first we hook up the scan tool and look for the code and data. Here I am using launch CRT711 new scan tool. Basically this tool is for TPMS plus diagnosis. Let's see how much it will help us to diagnose the problem in this car. First key on and go to the diagnose. And then select Suzuki from the list. Tap on automatically search. This is a Japanese car. Select Japan. It has detected the VIN number and the model. Just tap on OK. Tap on health report for get a full scan report. Okay, here we have full system report. ECM has a fault code for the O2 sensor as customer complaint. I am okay with the other system codes. We just diagnosed this PO130 O2 sensor code. You can see here on the exhaust manifold the bank 1 O2 sensor 1. This one is a wide band air fuel sensor on this specific car. Let's pull the live data and see what's going on. For that start the engine first. Check engine is illuminating. Also idle is bit higher than normal. Ok, enter to the ECM and go to the read data stream. I just select basic data pits relevant to EFI system including fuel trim data. Thirteen data pits have been selected. Let's see how data is rolling. Coolant temperature is 60 degrees of Celsius. Also idle engine speed is over 900 which is bit higher. I forgot to get the fuel system status data pit. Here it is.
Fuel system is in the closed loop mode which is good. Look at the AF B1 S1 current data. That is the upstream oxygen sensor. I just rave it up and look it hang around 0 milliamp which should be at any RPM under right stoichiometric. But just look carefully. When it come back to idle, data range fluctuate between plus and minus higher milliamp range. Let's look into the graph mode for better visualization. Look, it's coming to the zero. Let's rave it up and let it to return idle again and observe it. Look, that is bit abnormal fluctuation when it return to idle. First go to positive milliamp and then swing back to higher negative milliamp range. Let's look at into the fuel trim data. Because this air fuel sensor data feedback drive the fuel trim and compensate the combustion into the stoichiometric. Look, long term fuel trim is positively way high which indicate a lean condition. Short trim is negative and try to compensate and bring down the total trim. Did you see when I wave it up all the trim goes lower close to zero. That is a sign of lean condition caused by a vacuum leak. Ok we go to the graph mode. Just look long trim is way high. Let's wave it up and look. Look at that. How long term fuel trim and total trim dramatically go down while raving up? That is classic indication of vacuum leak. When let it to idle, just look again long term trim and total trim start to rise positively. Crystal clear vacuum leak. Rule of thumb in the stoichiometric is lower than positive or negative 5% of trim. If over 5% mean there is a problem. Over positive 5% indicate lean condition and over negative 5 indicate rich condition. Normally vacuum leak could occur around somewhere in the intake manifold. It can be leaked from brake booster or PCV or perch valve etc. We can throw a smoke test to identify vacuum leaks. Before go to advanced test we can just block those vacuum lines one by one and observe any changes in the fuel trim data. Here I am going to remove the brake booster hose first and block it and look for the fuel trim data. Just remove the vacuum line and block it by using an old spark plug as simple. Let's look how fuel trim data without brake booster vacuum line. Ok, start the car. Look what is happening. Short term fuel trim goes negatively high and concentrate against long term trim to bring it down the total trim near zero. It was really easy for me and my first attempt was right that blocked the brake booster and check vacuum leak. We can check fuel trim data by pushing the brake pedal when we have vacuum leak on the brake booster. Then definitely trims will go higher positively. But as we have disconnected the booster hose, still trims are around zero, which indicate no more vacuum leak. We go to troubleshoot O2 sensor code, but we found a vacuum leak. There is a relationship between them. In this kind of vacuum leak situation, we should get PO171 system 2 lean code. But this early 2010 Suzuki always throw O2 sensor code for such kind of fuel system faults. Definitely we must do proper diagnosis. 
Okay, let's reconnect the brake booster vacuum line again and recheck O2 sensor data and fuel trim data. Look what has happened after reconnect the brake booster hose. Long trim stay over positive 13 and total trim is rising positively. Okay, let's see what will happen when push the brake pedal. Look at that, short trim goes positively way high and total trim also rising. As I said earlier, when brake booster leak vacuum, it will be a large leak when push the brake pedal. Huge vacuum leak. Now short trim is 25% and total trim is almost 40%. All the trim values are positive. Big lean condition. Release the brake pedal, trim is getting lower. Let's check how O2 sensor responds to this situation. Here I have loaded AFB1S1 current data bit. It is on the zero right now. But let's push the brake pedal and increase the vacuum leak and check. When rave it up, just look how air fuel sensor responds. It is fluctuating between rich and lean quickly. Bring it into the zero line via the stoichiometric. This graph indicates that this air fuel sensor is perfectly working. Push the brake pedal and boost the vacuum leak on brake booster to see how air fuel sensor responds. Just look how AF sensor current is rising positively when vacuum leak go bigger. Then swing back to negative side over zero as fuel trim start to concentrating for bringing it to right air fuel mixture. Always remember positive milliamp indicate lean condition and negative milliamp indicate rich condition on the white band oxygen sensor same as fuel trim. Around 0 milliamp mean right in the stoichiometric. Look again when push the brake pedal graph go to lean side and when release the pedal graph swing back to the rich side to concentrate into right air fuel mixture. Again and again this data proof this is a perfectly working air fuel sensor. No need to replace a new sensor without reasonable reason. Due to the vacuum leak, air fuel sensor detect a huge lean condition. Then ECM set a fault code for the oxygen sensor. We must not be misleaded when see a fault code. Just need a proper diagnosis and identify the real cause. Confirmed, this car need a brake booster. At the end, I would like to pay my honor to Scanner Diana who taught us don't be a part changer. Thank you for watching.